Alright, ready? Yep. Welcome to the Solution Not Tip Podcast. Look, we've got my guy. Go ahead and tell me your name and who you are and what you do. Man, uh, ABKC Judge uh, James Feltus, um, better known as uh, Feltus International, the host with the most. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, I've been to three ABKC shows in my life. Um, we got Aaron Sims in the background over here. Be on. He'll be on here at some point tonight. Uh, first show I ever went to, he unfortunately didn't make it, but I was able to shoot his dog. Next show, literally, was the ABKC Nationals. And then this show, Fred Duran said, this is a big show, Trev. This is a huge show, big opportunity. It sets up the year. This is how we want to start the year off. This guy's been doing it for forever. We're grateful to have him as a part of the community. I said, bet, I'll be there. <laughs> and Aaron and I, we then planned a whole week. Uh, basically 10 days where we can go through the West Coast, shoot some dogs, capture some wonderful moments. And who would have known I would have bumped into this, uh, <laughs> this this old soul, if you will. But <laughs> when I say old soul, I mean he's been here through in, in, since inception, right? Since inception, yep, since yeah. the beginning. So you used to breed, you used to compete, mm -hmm. you used to go down the road, walk him through that a little bit, man. Was it, what it's been like watching the change or even you changing as you change course, but still stay the course? Man, um... Shit has changed, right? Uh, yeah, a lot. I remember when I first started, it started with the uh, Blue Nose Pit Bull, <laughs> right? And that, that goes back into around probably like 1998, uh, 99, you know. Um, then quickly right after that, the American Bully kind of stole the Blue Pit Bull juice, <laughs> right? You know, and um, after that, it's, it's just been on, right? The evolving of the breed is just uncomparable to anything else. What was you know? the biggest transition you've seen in those past, what, 20 plus years now? Just the, 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 the demand in the particular breed, right? Yeah. Um, and then understanding that there's a complete difference between an American Pit Bull Terrier versus an American Bully. Right, because at that time it was a big stigma. Oh, that's a pit bull, that's a pit bull. No, nah, it's an American bully. Yeah. So throughout the years, there's a big understanding that those are two completely different dogs. It seems that just now, though, the dog's kind of getting a look that kind of looks different, mm -hmm. but it's still very similar to the old look, but it's like, okay, this, this is an American bully. Mm -hmm. It's just now getting the recognition, if you would. Correct. I see, I see. And so you then... You had a dog, we were talking about it off off camera, that you were campaigning. You said his name was Convo? Yeah, it was Convo. He was a Hindu grandson, um, which was uh, off of uh, Rockwood's Uno. So it was two times Rockwood Uno. I see. And you stopped. You stopped showing. Stopped showing. Yep, I stopped showing after he became a champion. And um, I remember like it was yesterday. It was actually at uh, one of uh, Benny and Michelle's shows. Um, I think it was a Christmas show, and um, we were sitting there like, man, we ain't going to have another show until February because her shows was always annual, right? And she had the Bully Love show in February. And um, so we were just sitting in the back, back chilling. You know, back then we didn't care how long we were out there in the park. You know, we'll park, hang out to like 3 a.m. in the morning, right? No matter how cold it is, we, we came suited and booted for the, you know, for the, for the occasion. So um, fast forward to that, I did my first show. Um, you know, I partnered up with a few people to do that first show, and um, it was a success because um, I ended up providing some for the community that wasn't there. Um, and what was the community missing? Because I mean, kind of my uh, my take as well. As I told you again, I I don't know this man from Adam. I literally had just talked to him for a brief moment last night, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, I, it sounds like you have a good read on intentions. Correct. And I do as well. And when people are rooted in the dog and overall experience of others, I mean, shit. Uh, Aaron back here told me that James ain't even got a beer and his show will run. Correct. Which means people also understand that this man is integral. For Absolutely. <laughs> which, which uh, I'm going to tell you this right now, people. Unfortunately, in this space or anytime you sell something for a high dollar, American Bully is not cheap. People get a little uh, shady. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, absolutely. So when you start, you know, meeting people who 
come from a space of integrity, want people to have a good time, who I, I, I captured a moment of honor. You mm-hmm. honored, uh, what was that guy's name? I don't know his name. Val. Val. Mm-hmm. And he's been in the space with the American Bully for how long? Um, actually, Val and his family um, supported my show since day one, right? His um, daughter um, is actually married to, um, you know, my man that runs Backyard Bully Camp. <laughs> So it's a whole, it's a family affair, if you would. I mean, yeah, it's a family affair, man. And who would have ever known that Val' daughter was with him, and now Val is in this space? Because my relationship has always been with his daughter and her her boyfriend. Yeah, you know, and not even knowing that that was Val's daughter. <laughs> So that's what happens when goodness links up people sometimes, you know, something the famous saying is what's understood don't gotta be explained. That part. Yeah, so when you turn around and you start you say, Oh shit. Right. I right. didn't even know. Didn't know. But it's shit. Still to this day I forget. <laughs> I, I mean, I was keeping it one hundred, I still forget, you know. Um, and that means the value of your relationships are based off the personal relationship you have with these people, not who they know, who they have access to, or what you can get from them. Absolutely, it's all about relationship. I care. I truly care for people. I, and right. I saw that. I saw that, which is why I was like, yo. And I almost, I'll be honest with you, people. I almost didn't ask him. You know, he's passing you on the thing. I said, yo, man, I don't know how long you're gonna be up here. You mind jumping on this podcast real quick? But everything about him, and mind you, I've got an instinct like a dog. Mm-hmm. Um, I come from a very tumultuous background, and, and just in general. So you know, you got to be able to read things quick because it can literally cost you your life. Right. And so right. you know, I feel a good energy about him. I've heard some good things, and either way it goes, with him, everybody will have something bad to say about somebody good, and good to say something about somebody bad. But it's a, ma- a matter of your experience with him, right? Right. Absolutely. And, <laughs> exactly. So what about the American bully, and even continue to host shows post showing? Do you love man? The family atmosphere. I do it for the fam. Look, when I was showing, it was family, right? It, typically, it's the breed, it's the dog first. No, it was the family, right? It was the camaraderie. It was to see your guys, hang out with your boys, right? Um, show your breed and stock off. You know what yeah. I mean? And kind of talk shit. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm like I'm, I'm coming to get your ass this weekend. You know, so you better, have, you better bring your A game. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so that's what it was in that in that time frame, right? And everything that was going on was family right a lot all the shows at Glen Helen was family oriented everybody was mentors yeah. right it wasn't no competitors it wasn't nobody trying to step on anybody's toes you know uh, that's what we we have missed you get what I'm saying and oh, absolutely I, and I kind of feel like my generation messed up on that because the, all the knowledge that was dropped down to us, we ran with it, but, but we ain't drop, we ain't pass it on. Yeah, and so that's where that gap is at. So and it's a big fucking gap right now, people. To be clear, and absolutely. I, and, and you know, I I just got back into the breeding space just six months ago, mm-hmm. and 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 realistically, have been scouting, if you would, for the past year or two. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that I couldn't find was a consistency in information mm-hmm. and people to get the information for. So I'm like, I like to be informed. Right. I don't I don't like I like making educated guesses, mm-hmm. which is have meaning I have a lot of information, not just throwing shit at the wall and see what happens, right? Right. And there are people that do that and it works. That's fine. But I love science and I love, you know, having a, a good mentor. So the mm-hmm. first thing I did was let me find the people who are really integrated into this space, mm-hmm. see what they're doing, see what's going on, get into the ring and not show the dog but just see what's really happening behind closed doors if you would right to see if there's an opportunity for me to for one help Mm -hmm. everything that i do is about adding value and i'd imagine yours is the same absolutely anything that i do i add value yeah you know i'm adding value to this podcast oh fucking for sure for fucking (laughs) sure man this this guy this guy right and i know it i know that's i'm like yo very few times in life do you get to bump into people and matter of fact he wasn't even at the show earlier right he came a little bit later right right yeah, so it's no fucking guarantee that I was even going to be in this position right now. Right, there was no guarantee that you would even see me because <laughs> I could have fucked around and not showed up at all. <laughs> and that's what I heard. Mind you, I probably was pre-warned that I said, yo, where's, where's the Jansen? And I pointed another guy. I thought that was you. He's like, nah. Nah, he might not even come, bro. He's got basketball. He's got this. He did with the family. He yeah. liable to uh, be somewhere else. and yeah. just. But it's a well-oiled machine. Absolutely. Like, like 100, I have... My my kids play at nine o'clock in California against Sierra Canyon, <laughs> and I'm contemplating right now: Do I bone out 
and go and support, or do I stay here to the you know to the end of the, the show? show? Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah. As we as we speak, and that's what I'm thinking. And that's the same way I fuck. You know, when I'm sitting in the seats, where I'm like, I'm just, I'm thinking of what ways I'm gonna shoot this to transition that because I like efficiency. Yeah, that's I, that's the number one thing: I'm, discipline and efficiency. Man, say say yeah. so. If you had to predict, or you know, even put out there, where do you think the APKC and American Bull is gonna go long term? Long term, I mean, they're gonna stay where they're at. Right? Is that a good thing or bad thing? Though? That's a good thing. It is what it is. <laughs> Look, let me be more clear with my question. I I, I've seen the dogs, and sometimes if you come from a dog like you're a dog lover, you can back a dog into a corner, right? Right. With, with too tight of blood. And then you think about mentorship, what you talked about. Mm -hmm. One of my mentors says, before you buy a dog, get you a mentor. Correct. And I'm glad that I found a few people to help guide me along the road, answer questions when I need them. But what are some things you think should change or could be better to assist in the survival, if you would, of the American bully. Just education. Yeah. Education. When I was showing, right, once again, like I said, I had mentors, right? Um, <laughs> big Rich. Shout out to Big Rich, right? He used to be an ABKC judge. Um, I ain't seen the big homie in a minute, and I hope all is well. Rich, if you listening to this, man, much love. Um, he was one of my first mentors. You know, Benny and Michelle was a mentor. You know, they're, um, they did their own on registry, you know what I mean, they're doing fairly successful with that. I wish them all the best, you know, and the love there. Um, Oscar Gomez also, he was another one of my mentors. He's off doing the WBA. Like, you know, my mentors wasn't no slouches. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Sylvia Gomez back then, you know, it was the elite edge, you know, she was a part of the elite edge. And I'm gonna keep it a, a buck, you know, back then, being an African American, you know, I wasn't too sure on how, um, you know, um, the La the Latins will um, react to us, yeah. right? Because back then in the era, you know, they really wasn't fucking with with the brothers. Bro, it's, you say back then in the era, even still to this day, and this, and I and I'm around Hispanic, like Ruben, uh, you know, Sergio Valdez. Nine out of ten of the people that I'm around, they are Hispanic or of that nature. And some of them have been as blunt with me to say, Trev, you know, uh, if I brought a brother home or a black person home, my, my mom would have a fit. Right. That's just how it goes. But culture, their culture, most cultures are based and rooted in culture. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in the black community, we don't have a culture, if you would. No, we had our culture, but they stripped it from us, and they're trying to rebrand it and call it they shit. But that's another topic. Yeah, but, but that is also a true story. And trust me, I'm very well versed in that level of information and education as well. So when you when he's saying that, he's saying that with good intentions and, and a clear mind, because I assure you, I've been in the homes with them. I've talked to their parents. I've got white friends from Kansas. Kansas, where I'm from, is very black and white. Mm -hmm. And they either like your black ass or they don't, to be clear. Straight up. So so, so uh, my buddy, who's a white kid, he would tell you his grandmother couldn't even understand at one point how we was friends. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's and, and mind you, I'm not no old man. This is still recent, you know. This is more recent than, than not. So I can only imagine what it was like in the 90s. I mean, just think about it, man. Like, it wasn't that long ago. Martin Luther King was still alive right now. Homie would be around, what, 82? Yeah, and think about that. Some of your grandparents are in the 80s, people. They're in their 80s, and he was shot down and killed in his, what, 50s? Yeah, like, that was right around the corner. And this is the thing about, you know, what I love about this, this man here is, most people don't know this, but Martin Luther King, he didn't want to do what he did, people. He really wanted to just be a uh, dean at Morehouse. But there is sometimes in life a calling bestowed upon your life that requires you to speak up and be something because nobody wants to be nothing. Mm -hmm. And it, it'll, it'll, you can't even sleep at night. Right. So when I first built one of my first businesses, I said, I said well, why don't you think, uh, you know, why do you think this is going to work? I said, because this either works or God's going to kill me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, I serve no other purpose than to serve people and to better people. So if this right. doesn't work, my life serves no purpose on this earth. What, what other good do I do? Right, right. <laughs> you know? Right. So I appreciate, you know, him sitting down having this conversation. As I said, I'm a big read on energy. Energy is a real fucking thing for those who don't believe it. I even love that he brought up the cultural differences and challenges because at the end of the day, people like to keep, um, put it like this, wealth needs about eight to 12 times in a community for you to stay wealthy. Right. The Hispanics, what do they do? They go buy things in cash. Mm -hmm. they, and then they help their friends. Help their, and then they'll, their fucking kids can live with them forever. That part. Yeah, forever. And then the Asians get this. The oldest kid often moves his parents in when they get of age so the parents can live and have a comfortable life because that was the sacrifice investment. And this is 
culturally speaking, there are a lot of cultural differences that I would encourage you to get hip to. Right. So I understand your concerns even with having them just being, hey, come on in, my, my, my friend. Right. Let, us, let us work with you. Because the thing about culture as well, and correct me if I'm wrong, they take it to another level in terms of seriousness. They respect, it's like a respect that comes with yeah. everything that they do more. Yeah, it's like the mob. <laughs> it's like the mob. Here you, you go. Know? And um, that's how we move. That's how my family move. Yeah. You know, I'm born and raised here in um, Las Vegas. And um, my movement, my mentality, it's all mob mentality. So I don't play no games. I expect nothing but um, efficiency and um, honesty. Straight up, if you're a man, be a man. <laughs> and that means, you know, some of y'all again get that confused too. A man's toughness is 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 not him being tough; it's him being true to himself. That part. And and always being clear, and that's okay. And that means the man might tell you no, or might show you how to do things a better way. But he got to be a man, and that just means he's clear. My my grandfather told me that twelve years old. Yeah. Two things. Number one thing between two men is clarity, Trey. Yeah. You as long as you know where the man stands, you can always work with him. You can always work with him. <laughs> you could always, always work with him. So. Being a person who knows that the community specifically needs more mentorship, mm -hmm. which I, mind you, jumped out, been out for 17 plus years, come back in, feel like it's even in more of a confused state than before. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that's due to the price tag that's been put on the bully, because in some respects, it's a desire to bring, makes you feel a certain way about yourself. Mm -hmm. So the average dog starts at 5000 mm -hmm. if not more, right? Well, you're right, but I think it's more... Ego, right? Okay, yeah. Ego is Talk the number one thing that destroys the male species is the ego, right? Ego, that's a female trait, okay? No disrespect to the ladies, but that's a female trait, right? A man need to be secure in what he does and what he's going to do, yeah. right? So what's, what's happening, everything is microwave. Mm, two minutes. Right, they want that seconds. ego. They want that big dog. Yeah. They want that Dax. They want that Miyagi. <laughs> Say right? So when they get that Dax and that Miyagi, they got that ego. They can beat their chest. Yeah. But you ain't do it right. How you gonna fall in love with that? How can you? That's a false sense of reality. <laughs> you ain't put that shit together. That's microwave. That mm -hmm. ain't real. Once you get in the lab and you create that. There you go. Understand, right? So when we was coming up, we knew pedigrees. How important pedigrees, by the way? It very important. Right? The pedigrees that tell you more about the humans than what we know about ourselves right now. <laughs> just off the dog pedigree. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So just understanding where certain traits, right? 80% of the dogs take from the mom. Okay? So when you see this badass stud, you think, oh man, I'm finna get this stud. I'm gonna breed to the stud and I'm gonna have the coldest shit on the market. No, you ain't. Not if your mama got a head like a clothes hanger, it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. You know what I mean? Because you're gonna have a bunch of clothes hanger puppies. You know what I mean? And you, you might get one. You might get one, right? And so now. One ain't enough, people, to be clear. It definitely ain't enough, right? One, too close, one is too close to none. <laughs> now, My man. But you, you do that, and now you wanna bash the dog. The dog can't produce this, that, and the other. You ain't do your research. Yeah. A lot of stuff pulled from the mom, pulled from the aunt, pulled from the uncle. You got to really sit there and study that. And if you don't do your research and you don't do your homework, you're not going to be successful. Right? And so what happened is that takes time. Research takes time. We live in a microwave era again. Man, Snapchat, Instagram, TikTok, you, I mean, everything's about now. So motherfuckers ain't got time to wait. I want to put this dog in the microwave and, and, and cook up a Miyagi. Mm -hmm. So that's what's hurting right now, right? So we have to go back to the drawing board and teach. Now, the problem that I think that we may run into, fake papers. <laughs> Paper hanging. Paper hanging. Paper so hanging, now, people. You don't know if you're really doing the right homework. That part. You know, you this dog say it's off of Dax in Hennessy, and actually that dog is off of Blue and Sage. You get what I'm saying? So now and you, Sage is an old name. Most people don't know where they can go man, to find that listen, man. man. Look, I'm, I'm, right I'm there, trying man. to tell you, he took you to a dog that you couldn't find, to be clear. He was probably there. 
Yeah, man, come on now. He he come was there, now. but you can't find Zay. Like who finding that dog? Like man. I understand the names he's saying. Uh, you know, I've I was look. I called up some old school breeders years ago, and I talked to them. Oh man, back in the day before social media, they had their names on the little websites, and I wasn't around for the message boards. But I would just call them and talk dog, see what right. they were talking about. Right. And and uh, you know, some of them were polite, some of them were a little hateful. <laughs> but the paper hanging thing is a real thing because at the end of the day, even if you do your research, what he's saying is it's kind of like this. I did nutrition for a long time. That there's a difference between fish you, you, you get out of the fresh water and fish that they fish farm. Right. The quality's different. Right. So now we're like, oh, this pedigree looks good, but them dogs look like goons. You say mm -hmm. something's off here, but I'm betting on percentages, numbers, and if you get real into it and understand coefficients and really know how to read your pedigree, you almost can calculate outcomes in a way that the average person can't but if the information's false you're going to have some issues absolutely absolutely what would be your best advice to some of the people that are trying to get into the abkc or just dog breeding or do this bully thing man do this shit for the right reasons right um everything in life is about timing it's about discipline it's about consistency if you can master those the world is yours Okay, and I and I will repeat it: consistency, discipline. Also, you got to throw time in there. Yeah. Everything is timing, right? So, how much? How how long does it take to create a quality dog? Just to really start things, if based on your experience. Simple, simple answer: it's it's three to five years for anything. And it's just not dogs. It's business. It's a relationship. You know, um, anything, like, I'm, I'm going to break it down to you. I'm going to give you the, the biggest game ever, right? Everything's the same. It's just dressed up different. Okay, so let's not look at this shit like it's too complex. The way you sell shoes is the same way you sell dogs, right? It ain't, ain't nothing changed. It's just the outfit, right? So that's how come I can come and do everything at a high level. Because I understood, I understand that already. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I'm past... 101. I'm class 102. You get what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. So, I, so I'm not wasting time. So now my moves are I'm moving correctly and efficiently. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, man, that's that's it right there. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, just to piggyback off what he said, though, those things, how I sell shoes is integral, right? Because before I sell you the highest expensive shoe, let's say I'm, you might come in for some drawers. I was like, yo, well, do you have feet problems? <laughs> right. Do you have such and such? Then you might not want to wear these Jordan yeah, ones. Exactly. You know what I mean? You, these might not be the shoes because they're more flat footed. Right. They're more such and such. So the part that, just to jump on what he said, I completely agree. How you are and who you are transcends to everything you do. And that will always precede your quality, precedes excellence, people, to be clear. So when you are a quality field person and you do things that take time and you put your energy in and you do the research and you respect the work that has to be done to get whatever result. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sell you the most expensive shoe. I'm going to sell you the best shoe for you. And that might mean I'm not the producer of it. Right. But it might be what's best for you. And trust me, what happens in the future, it's more like you'll come back and fuck with me. Right, man. You got And you got to be honest with people, dog. Yeah. Like one thing about me, I'm honest. Right? And some people hate that. Because if I don't fuck with you, I'm going to let you know I don't. <laughs> same way. You know fuck what I mean? My face. Yeah, same and, way. And if I love you, I'm going to let you know I love you. Yeah. Right? Because I can go home and I sleep great at night. Absolutely. You know, I'm going to give you transparent advice and I'm going to tell you how I feel. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, Because I don't want no bullshit. I don't got time for bullshit. Yeah. My life is too great to be entertaining bullshit. Sure. Right. And even, but even when you say that, I'm thinking about, you know, part of, I think a lot of men's childhood, like men and their childhood sometimes, men and their emotional state of being. And, 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 you know, feeding that one thing that you spoke about was ecosystem, and I'm, I'm going to jump. This is kind of off topic, but on topic. There's somebody who told me about some alpha male they were dealing with, but he was just a weak-ass nigga. Mm -hmm. And the problem was, is in a room of alpha males, we don't question who we are, what's going on. Because no. we, cause we like, oh, that's what he's doing? Oh, he's doing that for attention. Even if I got an old lady, she's not tripping off you because she knows the value mm -hmm. and respects the man that I am. Mm -hmm. For one, because I'm a man. Mm -hmm. And a real man at that, someone who doesn't is not driven by ego, right. pride, right. and in a negative way. And mind you, it's good to be proud about the things you've achieved and the work that you do. But the negative side to pride is ego. Right. And I love that you said it is a female trait.
Because women get caught up in it. Just think about how many housewives shows it is. They get caught up in look at me. And when men get caught up in that look at me, what I love is people know who the man is. You know he has some good banner. I watch it. I listen to it. I do the same thing. I call everybody boss because they think I'm so well accomplished. But I tell y'all, and I've said this before, until I do it a thousand times, it don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> and then even then, we just getting started. Right, right. <laughs> I, got, I got to do it a thousand times. So that it means something to me. I don't give a fuck what y'all think. Yeah. It's important for me to try a thousand times because at that point, then I start making sense of it. Yeah. And it's good along the way, to be clear. Videos, uh, this podcast, this is unscripted, people. This is literally him and me sitting down, badgering. I don't, I don't know everything he does. I love that you do sports. Mm-hmm. Part of the original reason why I picked up a camera is because I wanted my kids to feel like they were part of Nike. Right. And one of the, even the first few videos that I shot is because I wanted them to feel special. Mm-hmm. It was a value add, right? And the guy was trying to charge me three racks. Mm. And I did what he did sitting on my grandmother's couch, chilling. I said, yeah. I'm yeah. like, oh, that's, that's all he did? Yeah. No, I said, what kind of camera did you buy? I was take that same three racks and invest right. in education, taking my time. And here we are today. And the camera has led me to meet great people like you, Aaron Sims, and so many other things we're going to achieve over this week, man. But I love that this is how it started. Right. It's helped me guide my guy here, Jamarcus, who's you know behind this this whole thing, and I've been pouring into him as well, man. I'd imagine, and I know what it's like. I got five kids on my phone, bro, and I tell people all the time, I couldn't do it again. Hmm. I couldn't do it. The, the one at the top, he died on the football field, man. Mm. One of the best kids I ever met in my life. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do it again. I mean, you know what goes you know what goes into bringing those young men to a place of value, building a belief system in them, pouring in integrity, especially to our ours, our kids who might lack father, right, and need structure, need discipline. Right. You got to be everything they need, not what they want, <laughs> and, and that's the hardest part, right? Yeah, yeah. Once again, discipline, consistency. That's it. How many men got that? Man say, <laughs> man say, I, I, you know, Marcus is one of my kennel partners, man. I told him when we first started, I said, guys, it's going to take about five years to create the dog we need just to start going in the right direction. Absolutely. Just so we're clear. Yeah. I said, so it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of dogs because we believe this or not. Some of the stuff ain't going to map out the way we want it to. Yeah. And we got to work through those kinks. Yeah. Then you got to take them to different dogs, right? To see how, see what their DNA does. There's so much stuff we got to learn. Mm-hmm. And that's a five-year process. That's a process, man. It's just like opening up a business. You open up a business, right? You rocking, yeah, everybody in your shit. They buying what you got going on, boom. You look at the cash register, you think you got profit. No, you ain't <laughs> You ain't looking at profit to your third, fourth year. You still got stuff you got to pay for. Yeah. You owe. You owe for that stove. You owe the rent. You <laughs> owe all your inventory. Like, understand it's going to take time. And it's the same thing with these dogs. It's gonna take time. You gotta be a scientist. You gotta study this. You gotta understand what you're doing. You gotta have the patience. And if you don't, this ain't the this ain't the field for you. And it's okay. But you gotta be honest with yourself. It starts with you too. Be honest and truthful with yourself. Because if you can't be true to yourself, you can't be true to nobody else. <laughs> well, I I preach preacher. I, I I tell. I just said this on another one. If some people um, want to know how to really improve and get out of this state of where they're being um, consumed by the idea of judgment from others, right? Right. It's the first thing you got to be okay in solidarity. Oh, man. You, you got to be okay being alone, man. man. With your own thoughts and who you are and who you're not for that matter. Work on that and then it'll be easier to void, if you would, the judgment of look, others. Look, I, I went through those trials and tribulations hosting shows right like like we we actually changed the game um in many ways in the beginning because we were the first ones to do two shows in one day three shows in one day four shows in one day five shows in one day Sheesh. we did that the rest of the united states wasn't fucking with it it was so much controversy so much no, that ain't right. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. But all I was doing was trying to give opportunity. Right? Yeah. I'm looking out. <laughs> but they want to criticize me for trying to do something right. If I am if I have the financial means to give other people opportunity, that's what I'm going to do. Because yeah. once again, this is a family. I have a mob mentality. We all going to eat. There you go, man. 
we all gonna eat. So much easier when we eating together too. So much easier. So then now, you fast forward. They used to call in to the office. Oh man, too many shows. And so then the office was like, you know what? We gonna we y'all can't host no more than two three shows anymore, right? So now, from a business side of it, it's kind of like trying to satisfy the one that's complaining. That's that's, that's <laughs> you don't do that you ever, know, people. You don't ever do that, right? Ever. So and then now look at it now. Everybody now, six shows, seven <laughs> shows, eight shows. Like, you know, I take pride in that because I ain't tooting my own horns. But I don't think the game would have evolved like that if we wouldn't have did what we did. We did that. We started that. I'm not looking for no credit, but it is what it is. Yeah. What's well, value at? It's, it's you saying, how can I make this experience even better for people? Right. And, Give and, them a fair chance. And on top of that, I was trying to help out the registry. Yeah. From a business standpoint, right? So at that time, ABKC in the UKC, the UKC wasn't fucking with the AKC, wasn't trying to respect what what we created here was the American bully. Yeah. Okay. So we're in our own lane, they're in their own lane. So me from a business person is, well, if you can't beat them, join them. <laughs> Right, or there's a blueprint there, right? Um, just like building homes, you yep. see a lot of these track calls called cookie cutter homes, mm -hmm. they all look alike, right? Because they're using the same blueprint, same blueprint, man. right? They, it cuts costs when, when I'm trying to build it, it cuts it the cost. Costs. Is, number one cost is people is time. So, how can we put this whole subdivision up in the least amount of time and make so the we, max amount of money? There out you of go, it, right? That's all the business is. So, so with that being said. All I did was take the UKC blueprint. They had shows, three, four, five shows. They were doing that. Why the ABKC can't do that? <laughs> well, no, my, why wouldn't they do that? Right. I wouldn't even just make sense. Who knows? Who knows what, it, what, what the masters was thinking at that time, but that's what I thought. Right. And that's what I brought to the registry. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, and just build off of that. That, that, that said, look, we'll be talking to a historian, people. I know I told you it was only going to be 20 minutes. We had 30. Look, tell them where they can find you, man. For one, um, I appreciate your time. For one, I know you're a busy cat. This ain't nothing, something you have never done. I'm one of those people who like to be the first to everything. Right. But I tell people, everybody around me, they know the rules. Press, play, and post. We post, we go, and part of my job is to keep up. We delete everything or save the stuff we need to delete everything at the end of every night because our job is to work. That's right. That's is, Our job is to work and stay moving. The rules are simple. How else do you expect to improve? Tell them where to find you, man. Give them some advice leaving out here, man. And you know I'm going to suit you some of these clips. But I appreciate you, man. Man, I appreciate you. Appreciate all you guys. Um, I'm, I'm real easy to find, man. Y'all got me on, on, on Facebook, you know, by my government name, you know. <laughs> all right. And you on, on Instagram, man, it's... Uh, Felt is, you know, F-E-L-T-U-S, international for short, I-N-T, right? So, F-E-L-T-U-S-I-N-T, right? That's my handle for Facebook, my Facebook page. That's my handle for my Instagram. Tap in, got any questions, holler at me. I'm going to give you my honest opinion, and we're going to keep that thing rolling. Yeah, 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 yeah. And again, you heard it here first, man. This is his story of the breed. He's throws some amazing shows. My people think a lot of them and think highly of them. I normally trust people judge me every now and then. You got to do your own recon. Definitely. Because you, you can't trust everything. That you can't know, trust right? everything. Let me ask this motherfucker a few more questions. Hey, but I tell you what, I got the receipts to prove it. There you go. Uh, he got the receipts to prove it. But again, like I said, I'm good with energy, man. I knew this was going to be something that was worth at least capturing. Mm -hmm. Every time I tell everybody that you can get in front of a camera video-wise, these are moments in history, man. Absolutely. These are moments in history that people can go back and watch and hopefully learn from. Absolutely. And this is part of even being in that mentorship side of things. Like, hey, let me go see what James, uh, you know, Feltis was talking about. And see, let me, oh, man, he said this. I'm going to use that. Yeah. And this is, you know, I would encourage you, man, to do more of this for the people. Because I know what it's like. I missed opportunities where there are 120 kids behind me on a football field. I'm in the white area, shot in Michigan, Kansas. One black, they said, how'd you get in with 14 high schools? Football coaches at that. So I went to some of the football, I some of life. Mm -hmm. I showed them how to prevent entry through education, and I tied everything together. And now they got 13, they, they best 13 for 13 games 
playing every fucking snap. Right. It makes a difference when 25 and 0 on the basketball team. It makes a difference. Yeah, it do. So I, I, I'm glad that you shifted. I'm glad to know you. I'm glad to have met you. I'm glad to be a part of this process. Shit, I'm glad I captured some of the moments that I didn't know was going to be captured. Right, right. No, so thank I you for everything you. that you do and have done and probably going to continue to do, man. Mm -hmm. That part. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. I'm back. <laughs> Subscribe, like, um, share with people, man. We're going to be bringing a lot more stuff. Uh, as I said before, I'm on the True Beast podcast with X Dog Stan, CEO, uh, on IG, man. This is something to piggyback off of what we're already doing to continue to fill and flood the earth with positivity. Amen. A lot of negativity is going on. A lot of answers is not being met. A lot of truth ain't being told. The best way to tell the truth is to sit down with honest people and challenge their thought and their being. And then for me, guess what? I get to go and capture the truth. <laughs> yeah, man. On top of that, man, stop the hate. Please. Stop the hate, man. We don't got time for the hate, man. You got hate in your blood, man. You need to find something else to do, dog. Yeah. You might need to go to church. <laughs> I don't know, but stop the hate, right? It's so real, though, ain't it, man? Man, you know, and, 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 and at the end of the day, they hate the greats, and I don't understand that. They hated Mike Tyson when he was at his prime. They hated Michael Jordan when he was at his prime. They hated Muhammad Ali when he was at his prime. They hated Floyd when he was at his prime. They hating KD right now at his prime. Like, it's like stop the hate, man. Embrace. Because you know what? Stop trying to give people flowers when they dead and gone. Give them the flowers when they here. I keep hearing that too. And that's the scary part, man. That's scary, but they can't live in the moment of greatness with you because they're so mad at you. Man, yeah, don't be mad. Come join me. Come join me. And I tell everybody this very simple. I say, if you don't like the way I do things, then I'll, I'll work me. It's really that simple. Just, just, I'll, just come live a day with in, in my shoe. Just I'll work me. Yeah. I'm That's okay it. posting and sharing your shit. I don't hold nothing back. Right. Nothing back. I'll work me. Yeah. Then, then, then I'll be like, okay, he's, but, but that ain't happening. That ain't happening. <laughs> That ain't happening. That ain't happening. So thank you for your time, man. Appreciate you jumping on, man. I can't wait for people to hear this one. Stay tuned. Stay moving. Take care of your dog, people. Peace. <laughs> good shit, man. I appreciate that. That was a good one. Now